begin lathing a baseball bat. First off, we're going to need to select our material. It's some um, 7 inch long by 3 quarter by 3 quarter pine. And you're going to be able to load it into your lathe because you've already watched our safety video on how to begin using a lathe. So this one's more keen to just creating the baseball bat project. First thing you're going to need to be able to do is mark your centers. So a straight line X from either side on both ends. So that then as you plunge this in, we're going to plunge it right into the center of our X. Once we plunge this all the way in, make sure that the spur is actually biting into your material. And then lock that tail stock down. Then make sure you have all your safety equipment your chisel, your roughing gauge, your safety glasses, and if you have long hair, pull it back. And finally, make sure to set up your tool rest so that it's just away from your material so that we're ready to go. One thing to note, as you're chiseling across, always leave one finger width at either end that you're not chiseling because metal to metal does not work well. First step we're going to do is rounding off our material before we start any shaping. A general rule of thumb is the less round or the larger your material is, the slower your speed goes. So we'll make sure and set up our speed knob correctly for the speed that we're going to take care of. And then make sure we use it that our cutting head, the flat side, is facing up as we bring it in, holding on tight to our chisel and applying slight bit of force before we start cutting into it. As you start lathing your material, you'll notice it getting rounder and rounder. But as you come along with it, you'll notice you'll still have your flat spots from where you haven't laid down far enough. So take time to turn off the machine, check to make sure you've made it all the way around so that once you have a fully round cylinder, then you can start picking out if you're going to have your head of your bat on this side and then the butt of the bat down here and then how to proportion things out. general ideas on which direction you're going to set up your bat, then start lathing the head of your bat first before your handle. If you lathe your handle too soon, you're going to create a weak point that the pressure of pushing it in the lathe, you're going to snap your bat. Now with it, you should have extra material available to you so that then your first bat project doesn't turn out right. You can try again and be able to succeed in lathing your baseball bat. Once you start lathing your bat to shape, you need to think about it as in four parts. You have the head of your bat, you have the butt of your bat, you have the handle of your bat, and then you have the taper going from the handle to the head. Now with it, each one of these has more or less a specific measurement to it. The head of your bat should be somewhere around three inches long, while the taper of your bat can be about three quarters of an inch. The handle of your bat can be about an inch and a quarter while the butt of your bat should only be about a quarter inch. This will give you an overall appearance of a proportional bat within the seven inch scale. So this is the head of my whole bat. So then somewhere around from here to here, I'm gonna have my taper 
Then all of this gray area will be my handle while I finish off here with the butt of my back. Once you have the general shape of your baseball bat, the next thing that you'll need to incorporate are the lines in the handle. To use that, you'll need to change tools to a skew or a pointed gouge. Definitely don't use your bull gouge or your roughing gouge. They will not make your lines. The hardest thing for it is to be able to have your lines come out and be perfectly even. So that's the aspect that this will be noticed on. Once you finish all your lines, you'll want to move your tool rest out of the way completely so that you don't get your fingers caught on it. Then you start sanding it. I recommend starting to sand with some 80 grit sandpaper that's used or recycled since you're having a powered turn. You don't want it to grab and pull out of your hands. And then work yourself to the 150 and 220 grits so that you can smooth out your baseball bat. Again, while you're sanding, be careful of your blocks on the end and all your metal parts. So as you're pulling your sandpaper across, you're not hitting your knuckles on it. So here I have my recycled sandpaper, all used from our sandpaper pile. Starting out with my 60 or 80 grit, working my way up to my 120, 150, and finally ending off with my 220 to make it nice and smooth. So with it, let's sand away. Don't take off too much material. Be careful again not to break it. Each time you load and unload your baseball bat is a worry on your breakage point. So try to always line up the same ends to the same ends so that everything <laughs> So once you have your baseball bat smooth and everything lined up for it, all your sanding marks out, everything that you want, you're gonna finish it off. Use wax, use oil. I like using a paste finishing wax with a little bit of a rag. Same kind of idea as what you would do for sanding it. So just a little bit on your rag, goop it up. Still wear safety glasses while waxing it because as this is spinning, debris could fly off and so we just want to keep everything out of your eyes. Then also with waxing it, you want it at a low speed, so turn that down. Make sure your tool rest is out of the way. Kick it back on, and then you'll start applying the wax to your bat. If you notice, it'll start changing color, so make sure you've waxed the whole area. And then depending on what finishing material you need, some of them, as soon as you've oiled it or put on the beeswax, that's done. As for this paste wax, you put it on for about 10 minutes, let it dry, and then come back with a little bit higher speed, polish it off to a nice shine. So after the 10 minutes of it sitting there, letting it dry out, we wanna crank up the speed a little bit. Add a little more friction so it heats up the wax. The wax will actually melt into the bat and start giving you a nice shiny finish. Again, be careful, you have spinning material on both ends. So it doesn't get wrapped up. Make sure your tool rest is out of the way. Once you have a nice smooth coat on the whole thing, loosen your tailstock. Pull your bat off. And then simply, basically any hand saw of your choice. I like using a little coping saw. Just saw off your two knobs, sand it by hand, 
and you're set and done. So in the end, once we have it all waxed up, we're going to pick a saw of our choice. I find it's easier to help mount our project while we do this. And then we're just going to cut it off. Finally, need to sand your ends flat, round off the top of the bat so that then we can hit it with some wax. So after cutting off the ends, sanding them a couple of times down, re-wax or refinish both ends so that everything matches and it's shiny and smooth. And here's your final baseball bat. Uh, depending on the options that your teacher has for you, one option is to put in a screw eye, turn it into a key ring or a key chain. Another option might be if there's a drill bit long enough and the right size to turn it into a ballpoint pen. So this qualifies as one of your lathe projects, one of your beginning.